And welcome back, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. All right, part three, um, rank up Sunday with Heimer Invoke hasn't been going perfectly so far, but we make, we're making one change. We are going to take out the main deck progress day um, for another star shaping, as we talked about at the end of the last game. Uh, the progress day, of course, is just to help out like with the, the late game decks, right? Give us that power. But star shaping does the same kind of thing. Like It's still great in the, the late game of getting you a really powerful celestial card. And plus it heals our nexus for, three, for five. Important against all these decks that are playing three decimates for us to have three star shaping. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and replace that. All right, let's get to some more games. Let's, let's play some more games. We're gonna play for about an hour. Each one of these four videos, we'll play for, you know, record them about an hour and then I'll uh, edit them down a little bit. And um, we'll, we'll see. So like, you know, maybe we'll play five games like we did the first time, maybe we'll play six games, depends on how fast the games are. Uh, Static Shock, I think, is just kind of too slow, honestly, against even against like the Bilge Water decks. I think it's too slow for for the meta game. It is good against Spiders, yes, but the Bilge Water deck doesn't play too many things with one health. All right, we're playing against a bigger deck, Trundle Trindamir. I like that. I, li I think our deck is pretty good against big decks. Um, that's a hand that's good against aggro. So we don't really need any of those cards. Right now, what we want is we just want Heimerdinger and a bunch of Flash of Brilliance and Bastion and, you know, that kind of stuff. Solari Priestess is honestly probably the... Actually, if I could choose one card to draw, it would be Solari Priestess. Sunburst is great against Trundle. Yeah, I want Solari Priestess. I don't want to just waste all of my mana. <laughs> no, Solar Priestess. I can't cast you now. These are troll lands. Yeah, yeah, these are troll lands. We get it. All right, a little unfortunate. Had to play that, um, but we have been drawing well. Solar Priestess, Flash of Brilliance, I like those cards. Those first two cards, I don't think matter that much. I'm gonna get this written in stars. Maybe we draw our Aurelian Soul. Have it cost one less. That could be something that could be important. Also, having this buff up a, a Heimerdinger maybe could be important. Make it a, a three five. I don't know. We'll just we'll have this written in stars. Be able to to chill in our hand. We'll maybe do something with it. Maybe not. Who knows? King of Trolls coming through. Skip block. Okay, let's see. I'm doing this. I'm gonna go with another Vi, where Vi can kill Trundle. Yeah, I saw that new the new announcement they made on the Runeterra channel. Looks really awesome. Looks like uh, they have good plans coming up. And very excited about it. All right, so we're going to go with the Tail Cascade. That will give the Vi the 10 power to level up. It will also have Vi stay alive throughout this attack. And I still have three mana for Bastion. So if they want to just let this happen and then go Ruination... We can save one of our champions with Bastion. Ooh, War Mother's Call. That's 
may be scarier than Bastion. 7-6 Overwhelm. So Sunburst is, of course, great against Trindamir if they're going to get Trindamir into play for free. Oh, no, not the third Trundle. All right, the third Trundle is bad news. This is gonna be fun. Plus seven? Seven? So one, two, three, so then they have four more in hand. So four out of those seven cards cost eight plus mana. Yeah. So obviously I can't stop Atrocity, which that's why I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to stop Atrocity. I don't think I can. Bask in her radiant blessing. I smell a fight! Right, I'll just use a Sunburst right now. We can still obliterate Trindamir. Where are you at leveling up? 11 out of 12? Alright, let's just level you up. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Dario. I guess, you know, like, we're playing against it right now. Yeah, the Wild Claws, Wild Claws do look pretty good. It's my first time really experiencing Alpha Wild Claw, but it has looked very good. So I have three additional mana. Okay, so good news is all three Trundles are gone. That's the good news. All right, well, I couldn't beat Atrocity last turn. I could have beat it this turn, but oh well. They just drew the Atrocity right now. That was their very last card. It's like, that was the, you know, they didn't have, like if they had Atrocity, they would have killed me the last turn. So I didn't, didn't really play around it, but I guess that was the card they top decked. Thank you, Chas. Thank you. Yeah, no, good, good games. It feels so weird keeping my five mana spells. It's just the five mana spells are so important. Maybe, maybe I mulligan Heimerdinger. I, I mean, obviously, I just drew another Heimerdinger, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. A third Heimerdinger? Are you kidding me? Come on. This is a tough call. Meteor Shower or Golden Sister? Sunlight guiding, my brethren. You go Meteor Shower. So Dario, what? I don't understand your question. If I do master this season, I can't go diamond for the rest of season. I'm not sure what that question. I'm not sure what you're trying to ask. Okay, well we've drawn every single champion besides Aurelian Soul in our entire deck. Correct. You cannot D rank once you. If you, yeah, once you hit one rank, you can't de-rank back to something else. So once you hit diamond, you can't go back to gold. Um, even, you know, you could lose 100 in a row. You'll still be in diamond. Same thing with masters. If you're in masters, you can't de-rank to anything else. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Like a fish in water. <laughs> they, they didn't have the atrocity for the trundle the turn before. They just drew the atrocity that turn 
Oh, you had it the entire game? Oh, so you could have just killed... Okay, so yeah, I guess... Oh, so you could have killed me? Oh, I thought it was the last... Maybe you drew a second copy or something. I thought it was the last card. But yeah, you could have killed me the turn before. Guess I'm going Vi. I'm doing this my way. I wonder if I'm supposed to pass priority first and have them play something and then I play Vi. My hand is so cost heavy that it's really hard for me if I pass and they pass also. It's really hard for me to waste any mana with how much the cards cost in my hand. Devotion to battle. Hot shit. Trouble coming at ya. Okay, so we just traded Solari Soldier for both Make It Rain and the second card from Petty Officer. Not expecting them to have Ravenous Flock in this version. Yeah, I, I had no mana and there was a 12 for Tundle. You best hope they'll do, mate. All right, some burst for Gangplank. Uh, Static Shock here. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess Static Shock is better now that Petty Officer is a three one. So if I would have Static Shock right there, we we would have been dead, right? Because then they would just they would have Noxion fervored one of these things to kill my Vi, and then they would have Gangplank still attacking, and I would not be able. To... I don't know. Maybe we wouldn't be dead. Ours is the one true light. All right, so I can play Solari Soldier. And Timer. And Guiding Touch. I rarely forget Come on, another Gangplank? I guess this game you just is the draw every one of your five mana champions game. Of course I'm casting this thing. It's just are these the blocks I'm making? Dimensions don't determine themselves. I don't know. I don't know. Six. Six is not much life. The Petty Officers have been really good against us. They have been better than what Iron Ballista would have would be. Pretty rough having all three Heimerdingers. Um, but I did draw one Guiding Touch, one Star Shaping. Oh no. If they don't break, they'll burn. This is kind of how it goes for me. 
Every time we've done the, the try hard rank up Sunday, every time we've done it three or four times now, we have done really poor. Gotta keep trying though. Yeah, like my last yeah, my last couple of times playing against the Noxus Bilgewater, they've had incredibly ideal hands. You know, a, a constant what's the best thing you can have, <laughs> and they've had it. Yes. Uh question all right, so question is maybe you should make changes based on results. Um there are definitely times to do that, and we have made one change. We, we took out a progress day for a star shaping, but I don't I don't think that makes making sweeping changes like every game and, and based on a small number of results is is um, is always the best. I don't think that that's something that you should be doing too much. But it's it's something to always keep in, keep in mind and consider you know consider while you're playing games, and that's that's why playing more games, having more experience is. Um, ideal. My spirit shines. Most likely Trundle, then we play Sunburst on Trundle. These are trolling. So that's why I went ahead and just attacked for one first. Because yeah, we have we have been losing to Bilgewater Noxus, but then changing our deck completely just to fight Bilgewater Noxus because then isn't always the best because then you just start getting paired against other stuff because you're not always going to get paired against Bilgewater Noxus. Using that deck for the example, the current example, we're going to be getting paired against different things. We can't have our, our deck only ready to face one thing. Um, I haven't struggled with Bilgewater Noxus near, nearly as much as we have today in the past. Hmm. It's a tough choice. I could get aggressive with the 4-1... We could have this immortal fire for turn eight. I guess I'm gonna do that with, with how my hand's looking. They block the three three, set up avalanche. I'm okay with that. I don't agree with the meta is not in a healthy place. I don't agree with that statement. I, there's a wide variety of... Like, you can play all sorts of different things. You can play aggro, you can play mid-range, you can play control. You, you can play everything. Like, there's... You know... I, I don't... There's not much else to hope for in a meta game than that. Like, that's that's what you hope for, is that, you can, that everything can be playable, and, and it is in this game. I think I think we've just been playing against some some opponents that have had some really fortunate draws of having like just amazing you know like the the Bilgewater Noxus deck when it has an amazing curve is going to be really difficult to beat and that's what we've been running into today and we've been losing but I I don't think we need to change our deck drastically because of that I think we just realized that um, it's something to keep in mind in the future but we don't need to change anything yet. So the Living Legends is awesome, but I also am looking at having no space right now. But I, I'll just keep that for later, because I'm not going to play the other Traveler yet. Like, we're probably going to be playing this Immortal Fire next turn. I don't need that other Traveler for a while. So yeah, let's just take this Living Legends, even though... Like, Hushed isn't looking amazing. We have some other cards that we aren't really playing. Oh, I guess I don't get to Sunburst, do I? I don't get to Silence Trindamir. 
which was my plan. Maybe I should have played this traveler first. Death itself can't stop me. All right, so we'll cast the hush. Just, I'm just gonna let damage happen. If they play, if they play some kind of spell to to kill my traveler, then we'll bastion. If not, we'll mystic shot. Either way, keep the overwhelm from happening. And now Trinomir won't. Yes, they Vile Fee, so I Bastion. So that works out. Impossible. Glad they attacked. I was worried that they wouldn't be attacking. All right, go get him a mortal fire. Especially how we can have a mortal fire with Bastion back up after this turn. That could be nice. Could pass turn and they waste all this mana. Is eight damage wor worth them wasting an entire turn? It probably is, right? Like it's probably worth them wasting the turn. Let's see. So they're gonna go War Mother's Call next turn. Sure. Okay. So hopefully Sunburst kills whatever they get. Oh no. My plan. <laughs> My plan was Sunburst. Uh, that thing doesn't die to Sunburst. So basically what I'm trying to think of right now, do we want to... You know, let's just cast a Flash of Brilliance first. Let's start with that. Oh. Wow. Our Flash of Brilliance actually made us on burst. Because I don't want to pass turn to them and then they also pass. I don't want that to happen. And me not play anything. Okay, so Great Beyond, so the combination of Great Beyond and the Immortal Fire will be able to kill them this next turn. It's 11, or that's 19 elusive. This one has a spell shield. We can spell shield the other one. Or, you know, it comes back whenever it dies. Come. Tonight we'll bring them to justice. It was looking good. Just a little bit ago. So I, so okay. I can hush I can hush the she who wanders. Attack. They block my 8-5. They take 11. They go down to 8. Don't love that option. Which I guess I should be attacking with the 11-8 because of Troll Chant. And and this thing has Fury also. Yeah, so I, I should have just attacked with the Great Beyond. That was a mistake. Yeah, I forgot about the, the Fury part too. <laughs> yep. Alright, definitely got punished. I guess Troll Chant would not have kept... Yeah, I guess Troll Chant wouldn't have worked perfectly. To me. Back heretic. Is this what so, like, they, they want these things to die anyway just to clear up space.
Now this puts my thing down to two, he two uh, life. I do like the spell shield, especially how they've already used... Like, they've used a good amount of Vile Feast and Troll Chance and stuff like that. Uh, it's d basically depending upon whether to use the one Bastion here or whether to use just Gotcha and Mystic Shot. You know, like Hush, Trindamir, and then also Gotcha and Mystic Shot. Just one of those two to do. Okay, Withering Wheel is awesome. That gets rid of my spell shield. Pretty good. Cast Hush on the She Who Wanders and keep it from regenerating. Um. But I'm just going to keep my mana in past turn. All right, let's see if we can kill them. Twenty-one damage. I guess not. Down to 12. I think this is where we got to get Heimerdinger out and start being able to go wide. I do kind of want to sunburst and hit the She Who Wanders with the sunburst. Um, I guess not. I could silence it, have it take the 4 damage, have it not regenerate, have it be a 10-4. Thirteen mana for Skies Descend. Alright, gonna keep them from being able to do the whole vulnerable thing. So we'll see what we would have drawn if I would have gone Pale Cascade. I didn't Go Pill Cascade, but we'll see what we would have been able to draw. Um. So now we're going to do it now. Oh, I would have had the Pill Cascade. Another one, so I guess, I guess maybe I could have had Lethal. Nope. They would have had Unspeakable Horror. That would not have lethal. Alright, so they have one Nightfall card. And then two random cards. Heimer needs one more turret to level up. Many tribes under one banner. Cool. Our Risen Hearth Guard's not going to kill us. Our banner will lead the way. Kind of want to do this block and then Mystic Shot to kill She Who Wanders. This is a bad play against Ruination, though. Because now my Immortal Fire dies to Ruination. But even if they have Ruination, you know, we have Vi and a good amount of other, you know, we have, we have some good stuff still. 
Alright, Pill Cascade. That was the Nightfall card they created. It's a good Nightfall card. Then they drew another unspeakable horror. So no two ones for me. One girl wrecking crew. Our strength is yours. Okay, so this is eight. We can do we can cast this four times for twelve mana. So that's another eight damage. So eight plus eight is sixteen. They're at 17, so that doesn't work. Just gonna make this attack and level up my Pi. Because I, I can get to 12 mana, of course, by casting Living Legends. We can get more mana. This game's a little longer than those Bilgewater Noxus games. Interesting. Interesting. I'd rather kill Vi. Alright, they're gonna have a, probably a pretty sweet Nightfall card. These unspeakable horrors have been incredible for them. They got like the Cygnus, and then that Pill Cascade that was really good, and now the Lunari Priestess is just the best thing to hit ever. Alright, this is a good time for this. Well, it looks like we either get Scourge or Immortal Fi or the Immortal Fire. I like the Immortal Fire, it not dying. And then we'll just Spell Shield this one. And I guess Spell Shield the other one too. I was hoping to play a couple of... Um, Celestial cards to make the Skies Descend even cheaper, but I can still cast it right here. That should be good. GG's or not GG's? That is the question. Sweet! Alright, we get that awesome animation. Okay, they haven't run out of cards yet. Kinda wanna just cast Sunburst. Punish transgressions. You'll need more than that. Cause Yeah, I mean they're they're just they're just dead, right? I mean I guess they can gain life. They have to like pop this spell shield and then also atrocity that thing or vengeance and then also gain life. But maybe I should be mulligating Solari Priestess. Hello. Alright, decided to mulligan Heimerdinger this time. I had not been mulliganing Heimerdinger in this matchup before, and, um, you know, trying a new tactic. Mulliganing Heimerdinger, and I think that is. I think that has worked out a little bit for us. Alright, they're coming in hot. We have a good start with our Solari, Solari cards. Good start. No one's the wiser. They'll never see it coming. I've got us covered. The guilty were bad. No mercy for heretics. Hmm. The guilty were bad. Cast Pill Cascade and keep this thing alive. I 
Let's do that. Priestess. Do I have time for written in stars? Do I have time? Bask in her radiant blessing. Probably not. For the Empire. For the glory of Noxus. We have some good Nexus healing. War Mason, reporting for duty. Yuck. They have good Nexus damage. So we're going to need that Nexus healing. Worst case scenario, of course, is Gangplank. Alright, not Gangplank. That's good. Okay, well, I played that because I was going to pill Cascade here, but actually, you know what? I should probably just gotcha over here. Yeah, I should probably just gotcha over there. So I didn't need to play that Guiding Touch when I did. So I feel pretty good about this one. Having no gangplank right there. Yeah, I could have just blocked the two three. I, I guess I could have done it that differently. I'll shoot the wings off a bill Hmm. I'm worried about playing Heimerdinger, and then they have. Um, they can have seven points of damage here with Decimate, Noxion Fervor. I'm kind of even worried about just going Mystic Shot on this thing because of Noxion Fervor. I guess I shouldn't be worried about Heimerdinger with that. Aren't any gods here? Just me. My spirit shines. Yeah, I shouldn't have been worried about Heimer because of the guiding touch. So yeah, that was safe. We get rid of both of these. So then this has to be a... So then they're probably not going to be able to use the Sleep with the Fishes unless that's a unit. And then if it is a unit, they can't they can't kill me. So no matter what, they can't kill me. Because if it's a spell, then they can't cast the Sleep with the Fishes. And we'll, we'll have 10 mana. Oh, no. I guess... Ah, uh, that's still I'm still fine. Okay, not gonna cast the sleep with the fishes. Sorry, Solari Priestess. I guess that's fine with them. So back up to twelve life, we have another star shaping. So Make It Rain is is what... That was the card on the right. That was what Zap Sprayfin drew. So that wasn't the card they drew for turn. So still holding on to that card. Let's do this. Yeah, I think it is Tetherial Beam, Ben. Uh, you know, that's what I'm, I'm playing today for climbing. Hasn't been working the best for us today, but I still... I'm, I believe in this deck. I... I've um, been learning a lot playing it. I think I... Can and kind of change how I've been playing it too. Hmm. 
I was thinking I was going to be getting the 8-8 with, with that. I forgot. With Living Legends, you never get the 8-8 because it fills your hand, so you don't have room for the 8-8. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not playing any of those cards. Discipline and conviction. So I could play the Pale Cascade to level up Heimerdinger, but I'm just going to go to the next turn. <clears throat> Alright, Golden Sister was what I wanted to find. Unfortunately, don't have room for the Silver Sister now. Daylight so that's just the way it is. The skies. Can't do anything about that. They have to have Nocturne for the fervor, otherwise they're dead. Keep doing the this is fine thing, so I figured they had an auction fervor, or I guess not. Oh, that is not the correct way to an auction fervor. The correct way to an auction fervor is to block the life steal and then fervor something else. This is not the correct thing to do. Has to has to go the other way. All right, GGs. Two and two. Calculated. Um. Yeah, it's fifty-five. So, all right. So this game, there. So this video, we only got through four games because we played that third game that was uh, super, super long. Um. But I think so. I think that what I, what I've been learning there with that Bilgewater Noxus deck, you know, I have been keeping Heimerdinger all the time, and we saw that really punish us in this video with the first our first loss, or I don't know, one of those losses, because then we just drew a lot more Heimerdingers and buys. I think with that matchup, we're going to just start mulliganing Heimerdinger and mulligan mulligan those five mana cards and make you know because you know we need, we need to have this early stuff. You know, we need Solari Soldier, Solari Shield Bearer. Um, that kind of stuff, Mystic Shot. We really want those three cards. And then, of course, uh, in the late game, we're going to need our Guiding Touch and Star Shaping and things like that. So, um, so continuing to learn, I think that, um, yeah, I, I'm fairly confident that we can continue to beat the Bilgewater and Noxus decks, kind of like how that game went. And that's what we're going to try. All right, so we're going to have one more video. Um, let's have one more video where we do... Uh, do a little better with our rank up deck, but I'm feeling good. Feeling good going into the last one. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.